Well, KDE is all about the apps. It's been our goal for the last year, worth checking out uh, what's happened the last year, how we can improve it the next year. Um, how do I control the site? First, worth asking, uh, reminding ourselves why we picked this goal um, last year. Uh, apps were always part of the KDE story. It was always part of the plan from the from day one when Mateus is and the other ones started it. Uh, it was to create uh, not just a desktop, but a suite of applications that went with it. Um, a suite of applications that uh, worked well together, looked good together, had the same usability, look, look and feel. Um, and that was a great goal. Um, and we kind of we, we achieved that along with the desktop. We achieved that within a few years, and we've improved it ever since. Um, but, uh, but the tech world moved on. Um, turns out somebody rejected patch from somebody else, and, and then another desktop got started, and a whole bunch of other desktops got started, and that's freedom for you. And uh, well, we never did monopolize the world in the way that Microsoft did, and that's probably not a bad thing. Um, so other desktops came along, other application suites came along, um, other form factors came along, of course. There were, there were uh, netbooks and, and web apps and, uh, and smartphones, um, and uh, other platforms came along. People either used to be people hosted on SourceForge or KDE or a similar project, um, but now you, you just start a project on GitLab or, or GitHub or, or something. So there's, there's no shortage of competition for people who want to make a free software open source app. No shortage of places they can do it, no shortage of communities that they can work with. Um, and that's been, that's been fabulous um, for the open source free software world, but it's meant that we've been stuck a little bit in our niche, a little bit, um, a little bit too focused on our apps being for KDE. Um, and even when KDE became the community, and even when uh, KDE became um, the people and and the, the Plasma brand got separated out, there was still this mindset, both within our community and in the, in the broader computing world, that these apps were for KDE, and if you weren't using Plasma, then they probably weren't that interesting to you. Um, and that means we missed out. Um, and of course, then the other change uh, in the computing ecosystem is the coming along of the app stores. So we've now got app stores for uh, Linux, um, and but there's also app stores for, for Windows and Mac and, and Android and maybe iPhone. And, uh, and because of changes in the licenses, cute, we can take advantage of this. But we've had a bit of an attitude problem with our, with our app story. As I say, we're too stuck in this mindset, not, not just us, but people out there, and people within KDE, and and everybody within KDE, I'm not blaming anyone in particular, but that mindset exists that we think our apps are, are for KDE, because that was the original vision 20 odd years ago. Um, even though that that restricts us to a niche of a niche, it, it doesn't allow us to promote our applications on their own terms. Um, and it, it means that we get a bit too much um, wedded to the idea that it, it uh, we must be separate from the distributions, um, and we can't ship our own software because we've depended upon Linux distributions for a long time, and they've done uh, a big service to us and continue and always will. Um, but it means we haven't taken control of our own applications too much, um, and we've been too scared that that Mac and Windows are, are a bit evil and a bit not to be touched. Um, and there's been I've had long and passionate arguments with with people within the KDE community where uh, we did a release of KDE applications, and I was told not to promote the app stores that our apps are on. I was told not to pr um, promote the channels that we have to ship our apps directly because they weren't quite complete. So there are the odd, um, there's some bugs in it, or, or maybe we're a bit too scared of doing the security updates, or we're a bit too scared of those new responsibilities that come along with shipping your stuff directly, or we don't want to offend the distributions or so forth. And again, that means we've we've missed the um, we've missed those opportunities. We're a bit too stuck in our niche, um, and and also the attitude exists that uh, packaging shouldn't be part of the application project. It can be a KD project, but it, it should be a separate project, and that limits uh, how it is for for those applications to be able to take control of their own destiny. So we picked the goal. All about the apps. We're going to focus and market on 
um, on Kitty's applications. And the way that we have done for Plasma, and Plasma now stands alone in its own brand and it's got a lot of recognition amongst Linux users, uh, that it's a great product and, uh, and it, it brings us back to being a, a leading desktop, lightweight, featureful, uh, simple, and needed, powerful, so by default powerful when needed. Um, but the apps in our marketing got a bit left behind, and in our in our um, in our effort to push them out to users and, and get grow those communities. So, what have we done last year with uh, KDE? Is all about the app school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We had KDE applications as a as a name for uh, the three monthly, four monthly release. Um, but then that duplicates that name, that branding was just a bit duplicated with well, the general concept of applications and KDE. Uh, if you want to talk about KDE applications, which one are you talking about? So we debranded that because it shouldn't matter how it gets released for for the end user, even for distributions. People don't care who who makes those release tables. Um, people care when there's a new version out and what those features are. Uh, so we debranded that. It's now just a release service, and it dumps tables every four months. Um, and it means that changes can be made like here on the kiddie.org front page. Uh, Carl and others redesigned that to highlight some of our top applications. And some of those are part of that bundle, some of them are not. It doesn't matter. What matters is that we're promoting those now directly on our front page of uh, kiddie.org. You can see some of our flagship apps here, of course, Chris, everybody talks about KDN Live is wonderful. Uh, contact is um, classic and beautiful and full of potential and kdevelop. Uh, is, uh, is for the networks out there and works great. Um, and you can see from the screenshot that we have these great apps and uh, yeah, users don't care how those, how those go out. Uh, and also on kd.org, uh, we tidied up the applications pages. Uh, we, uh, we now list all of the applications that the page is made automatically. Um, it's got a few bugs you can see in there, so that needs a bit of quality assurance. But but we download those from the metadata files, AppStream, and AppStream means that we can control our metadata. This is pretty pretty basic stuff, but it was a long time coming um, where we say, here's a description, here's an icon that goes along with it, uh, here's a screenshot, and here's when the release is up. So within these application pages, um, we've now changed that website or improved that website. Uh, so it now has an install on Linux button. You go there on Linux, it says install on Linux. You go on a different platform, it says install on Windows or, or whatever. Um, that's using the AppStream URL. We were the first people to use that, I think, because it, it, it's not even a URL, right? So the specification was buggy. So we had a few fixes to make there. Um, but then you can just click on that, and it'll open up Discover or GNOME Software Center or whatever, open your application. Um, and that application will pick the best method to install. And we, as coders don't have a, shouldn't have a strong opinion of what the best method to install is, that's for the user. And the user can uh, decide to put sort of packages or, or containerized formats uh, are best for them. So you can see here on, on Krita underneath it, it has uh, uh, options to install on Linux, and that uses the AppStream URL, but also on the Microsoft Store and Google Play Store. Um, but you can also see further down, it has uh, release text. So when there's a new release, they can add it to that AppStream file um, that then appears on this website, and it can appear anywhere else that um, can automate that and suck it away. It also shows how you download, uh, do a direct download of AppStream files for Mac OS or Windows or, or get the source. So for the first time now, if someone goes, oh, there's a new release of Creta out, how do I get that? They can go to our website and they can get it. And uh, well, I'll be using this as an example later on. Of course, everybody uses Krita as an example because it's a flagship app and does everything right. Um, but it um, it nicely gives a smooth experience to the user. Uh, along with the debranding of the of the KDE applications, uh, we did uh, the monthly app updates. Uh, so we are actually doing some promotion of our apps. What what's happened in the last month? Um, part of these 200 new tables are being released today. Those are synced with the release service uh, releases, um, but they're not. They include stuff that comes from anywhere within KDE self-released. Um, again, we've debranded the idea of extra gear. It's just a self-released application. It shouldn't matter how the release happens. What that matters is what the shiny new features are. Uh, so we're promoting Digicam, big new release seven, uh, Dolphin, and not only. Does it promote the applications, but it promotes how you get those applications. So it says, 
Um, you can download this app image. You can install it from Snaps, you can install it on Windows and so forth. And I've also included there the occasional review of app stores or interview with somebody who's working on the app store just to promote the idea that these channels are out there um, and they're a great way to get our apps. So to review all the channels out there and a great way to get our apps, how much how's my time doing? We've got uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Q&A, we'll start with what? One minute to Q&A. What? I thought I had half an hour here. Well, um, so we've got the Snap Store here. Um, that's made by KDE Neon, mostly, our stuff. Um, but also other, other people have uh, accounts there, and they've got a nice feature. We've got a tutorial uh, coming up on Monday, and, uh, and that has most of the applications in KDE. Um, you can see where those packages come from, um, and you can see metrics on them. Uh, so that's one of the nice changes that you get from this stuff. So Krita has $42,000 installs. Um, Ocular has also $42,000. Uh, Color Paint, 15,000 installs. Uh, Flatpak, you've got a load of load of applications there. Um, and that's made by, uh, they've got a talk later today, so go and see that. And in FlatTab. Uh, app Images, uh, by nature, doesn't really have a store, uh, but it a lot of applications use that as a, a way to say, here's a trivial way to get our application. And they can take full control of that. So that's been quite popular with a number of them. Uh, not just Linux app stores, but also package managers on Windows. Chocolatey is a package manager on Windows. Um, people who manage lots of Windows machines, or they have to be particularly nerdy, they use that as a good way to get their software. Uh, we've got three or four applications, uh, three listed here. Uh, on that store, and well, it's a good way to do some more. Do I need to stop now? Is there some Q and A now? If you'd like to start Q and A, I can start reading you the questions. Go for it. What questions we got? All right. So first question says: In the beginning, you mentioned iOS as a possible target for apps. There is some interest in that target in the Maui project, IARC, and also in Kden. Do we already have a system that could be reused for iOS, for example, Craft, or is something new? Uh, iOS is difficult. I don't know. Uh, Homebrew on Mac OS has worked quite well. That's for desktop applications. You're asking about mobile stuff. Uh, we brought Homebrew into KDE, so there's another package manager for Mac mostly, um, and and that's now been successfully integrated into KDE. Um, Mac, we've got a number of stuff made for Mac OS. Uh, so we, yeah, we look on. If you look on Binary Factory, there's quite a few made there, um, and and those are listed on the download pages. Uh, I've got a slide in here about uh, that's best practice on Apple's App Store. No results, um, possibly because it just smells bad. Maybe you can't put GPL and stuff there. I don't know. Maybe nobody's had a strong interest. Um, I, I did notice that LibreOffice is there twice, so it must be possible to put free software stuff there. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's the same on the on the iOS iPhone app store. Um, we've got nothing there, but there must be ways to do it. Um, and yeah, I'm afraid I don't know if Craft can build successfully on those. I I would yeah I don't know. I defer to to Hannah and the others who do Craft for that. Is there another question? Yes. So next question, is it possible to have links to Android Play Store slash Freud on the website, for example, for itinerary or KDE Connect? Uh, so Android Play Store is another store that uh, we should take advantage of. And we have a little bit. We've got uh, half a dozen apps on there. Um, and and it, uh, it's interesting because it also allows commercialization. It allows for, for apps to have money next to them if they need it. Um, and well, it's, it's stupidly popular, of course. Um, but does need your app to be reconfigured for mobile. Um, is it possible to have links in the store? Yeah, I think it is. I think that slide that I showed up, Krita. Did that happen? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that on KDE.org applications, that's got a link to the Google Play Store. 
um, and I encourage anybody to who has an app to put it into Google Play um, and get that on in their app stream file and then appear. Um, but I had in in my new not quite success slide um, F Droid, which is a, a another app store for Android, free software, so it goes along with all our ideals. But so far, we've only got two things there um, that I can find, and uh, it'd be great to have more things on F Droid. Is there another question? Yes. Next question is KDE apps and the whole Linux itself. I'm not so sure about that, in quotes. Uh, still are not friendly with some graphic drivers like NVIDIA, sorry, not pronouncing it uh, or something, which makes users have to install lots of things. So what do developers do to fix and improve this? Uh, what the developers do to fix NVIDIA did mostly run away in my experience. Um, it, that's difficult, of course, because the, it's a long stack that graphics is on top of, and if something doesn't work low down, uh, especially with NVIDIA, there's a limited amount that we can do. Um, it, um, 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 I, on the NVIDIA laptop that I have, I tend to just use the, the Intel chip on it, unfortunately. Um, yeah, that's one of the failures of just the whole GNU Linux ecosystem is that we're not always so integrated uh, all the way down the stack. And it would be great if we were. And mostly talk to the Quinn developers because they're the ones who know about graphics. Is there another, talk? another question? We've got a few more questions. Go for it. All right. So. Next one, as a developer, how do I reproduce the magic of packaging if I need to debug packaging slash builds or platform specific bugs slash issues with my app? Example, KD Android SDK helps for Android. What else is there? Uh, building stuff, you can build a lot of stuff with the craft tool, which successfully builds on different platforms. Whenever I built on a different platform, you have to have that platform with you or, or a virtual machine. So I know for Windows, you can download virtual machines from Microsoft, um, which run on VirtualBox. Um, and those are free to anybody to try. So if you're developing your app on Windows, then anybody can try that. Um, I don't know enough about Android to know the equivalent systems in Android, uh, but they should be out there. All right, the next question, yeah. Does Promo need to make changes in their approach to de-emphasize the bundle, or is the rebranding successful in meeting that goal? Uh, is the rebranding successful of Kitty Apps stuff? Um, I don't know, because that's that's up to the people who have seen it and, and yeah, work out, does it make sense? Um, it was, I mean, it's still not quite perfect, but it's, the only thing that we, the only setup that we could agree on, um, I, it, and and I like to think that in, in creating those monthly app updates, that we've mostly successfully moved away from the idea that uh, here's here's a bundle um, that's released today, and um, gone into the idea that it, it's everything that's been released on this week. Um, the other problem I have with those is stuff that gets put into distros in various forms and in. Private repositories, maybe, um, and so people think they're available, um, even if they haven't been fully released as a stable one. Uh, it's tempting to say, "Oh, this is out now," because we know there are people out there using that. Um, and we're very keen in all about the apps, but also with my neon hat on to make the point that uh, stuff needs to be released from KDE properly. And yeah, occasionally you get the odd maintainer who, who it works for them, but so they don't want to make it a terrible or they don't want to make a release and a tag. Um, and that's the nice thing about the KDE community course is that if you don't want to do some particular part of it, there's probably a team out there that will that will pick up the slack and, and help out. Uh, so we can certainly do that on all about the apps. Um, I've done a number of releases. And the other side of that uh, is incubators bringing stuff into, uh, into KDE, which is also part of the goal, because the whole point is to make KDE an attractive ecosystem for an attractive place to develop your app. Uh, so it's an important part of the goal also is to, to bring stuff from outside KDE into KDE as part of that incubator process. 
Um, and we've reviewed a number of ones this year. I think the Rolly stream is particularly interesting and fun. It's a virtual role playing, virtual tabletop software dedicated to pen and paper role playing games. Um, and that's bringing in a whole new community that was there, new discussion channels, even with Discord and whatnot, um, who want to be part of our community. And that's just great to see. All right. Well, we have a minute to go, and there are four more questions, but I will ask you the most important question of the hour. Um, who is the KDE baby? Who is the KDE baby? Well, I <laughs> want to introduce yourself. Just, just while we're in lockdown, I, I was feeling like we should, we should have a bit more. We should have some ambiance here and, and some find friends come along to see our talk, so well now you can introduce yourself. Yeah, he's learning to be a developer. Yeah, he, he will be a developer coming coming in soon. So, uh, so would you like to help some projects through the incubator? <laughs> yeah. Very cute. Um, Jonathan, I will send you the remaining questions, and you can put them to those in the academy page, or however you'd like. I'm sorry I missed that. Um, I will send you the remaining questions and okay. answer those in the attendance chat or however else you'd like. Yep, attendance chat works. Okay, well, thank you so much, Jonathan.